Can you take the hose and put it around anybody's neck and squeeze it no, so sir. that you could see where the marks were? No, I did not. Do you know whether the marks that are left when you squeeze the hose around your neck would leave marks on the neck? Can I repeat that? When, you, when I put that hose around my neck, did I leave marks? I do not see any, but you're still alive. That was the defense attorney from the very first trial we covered here after the relaunch of Court TV, South Carolina versus Michael Colucci. There was a lot of intrigue and some really good lawyering in this Southern murder mystery, which you can now watch online in our Trials on Demand section. Here's more on the case from Ted Rollins. The call to 911 claims she hung herself. Prosecutors ridiculed Michael Colucci's story. Does it make sense that Sarah hung herself in broad daylight, less than 25 feet away from the defendant? But that is exactly what Colucci told 911. What makes you say she tried to kill herself? She said, she said, you come on, please. She what? She, was, she put herself around a, a, a hose or something. I don't know. She can't please. The hose Colucci is referring to was looped around the fence, and Colucci told 911 operators that he thought his wife hung herself after squeezing through this gap. Colucci said they stopped so Sarah could use the bathroom while he waited in the car. By the time he realized something was wrong, the damage was done. First responders said they were at the scene within minutes after getting Colucci's call, but Sarah was too far gone to attempt life-saving measures. She was blue around the lips, blue to purple, somewhat cold to the touch. Investigators who visited the scene just could not buy Colucci's story that Sarah hung herself with a hose. And I was just surprised at how close the distance between where the vehicle was and where uh, the garden hose was located. One inch garden hose did not make those three eighths of an inch impressions on her skin. In your experience and expert opinion, would the amount of trauma you saw in the victim's neck area be consistent with a hanging? No. A prosecution called an expert to say the garden hose was too wide to make the impressions found on Sarah's neck. Another ligature in this case that is three-eighths of an inch. I believe that this is the necklace that was used as the ligature to cause those three furrows on her neck. And the width of this is three-eighths of an inch. It's the same necklace that Sarah wore the day she was killed. Prosecutors argued the furrows on her neck were made because Colucci strangled her. But the defense attacked that theory. Show this jury how much strength it takes to put those ligature marks on my neck. Go ahead, you yes. young man. You don't want this jury to know how if I did this around your neck and I pulled on it, it would distort it, but it's not three-eighths of an inch now. The demonstration on cross-examination caused the necklace to break apart and left cuts on the hand of defense attorney Andy Savage. His point, if the necklace had been used to strangle Sarah Colucci, it would have required so much force that it would have broken apart, just as it did in the demo. But it was intact when she was found. The marks on Sarah's neck weren't the only signs that troubled investigators. A bruise on Sarah Lynn's eye, scrapes on her knees, what looked like a struggle in the car, a loose fingernail, broken sunglasses, and a cracked phone. Colucci, too, bore signs of trauma, a busted lip, scrapes on his hands and arms. Conversation seemed like it was rehearsed. Prosecutors called a string of witnesses, including Sarah's mother, to highlight Colucci's evolving statements. And he looked me right dead in the face and he said, do you think I did something to Sarah? And I said, did you? And he never said anything. Internal hemorrhaging on the right, lower than that. That is from his hands. Thumb, hands. Michael Colucci strangled his wife to death. But the defense countered with an expert to suggest it was possible that she got tangled up in the garden hose and lost consciousness, hanging herself in the process. But there was no manual strangulation here. I've seen enough manual strangulations that this is not one of those. The defense also argued alcohol and drugs may have played a role in Sarah's death. Her toxicology results revealed cocaine in her system and a blood alcohol level that was three times the state's legal limit. At this time, we are still deadlocked. 
After two days of deliberations, the jury announced it could not reach a verdict. So I think at this point I'm constrained to declare a mistrial. Unbelievable mistrial. So this one is still lingering out there. Let's bring in Court TV anchor Ted Rollins. Um, uh, Ted, before I have a few questions to ask you, but first, um, the defense attorney destroyed a piece of evidence in the case, didn't he? And there's going to be a retrial. What, what are we doing about that? Yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, Andy Savage, he was very theatrical. I uh, actually covered this trial for Court TV. I was in the courtroom, and uh, he takes over the courtroom, as you can just see from the clips. Uh, so they're going to have to deal with this evidence that has now been changed in the retrial. And there is expected to be a retrial. The, the state is absolutely going to retry Michael Colucci. They believe he killed his wife. And Andy Savage is on board to defend him again. You don't usually see that after a mistrial, but he is going to defend him because of COVID-19. There's no trial date and uh, no decision yet on that. What's going to happen to the necklace? Yeah, well, right now it, it looks a lot more like a murder weapon than it did before the first trial, so it could be to the prosecution advantage. Absolutely. It's hard. How do you explain that, right? I mean, there has to be some sort of stipulation that it was during the last trial damaged, and then the jury is going to have to be informed of it. But I agree with you. I think it's actually positive for the, uh, for the state. Okay. Uh, I understand you spoke with the victim's mother today. What did she have to say? Uh, yeah, Barbara Moore, oh boy, she's been through this. Uh, we met her, you know, in the courtroom. She was a witness. She was there every day, her and her husband. Her husband actually passed away in February of this year, January of this year of a stroke. He had a stroke in, in December. Uh, and she is waiting for justice. Uh, she says that uh, she's going to be patient. This has been excruciating, this whole process. She's convinced that Michael Colucci killed her daughter. Here's what she said. There's no doubt in my mind that Michael is guilty, and the reason being because of things that Michael told me. Plus, he gave me so many different um, ways it happened, you know, how he found her. Never once did he tell me the same story, and the stories were nowhere even close to one another. Whether Michael has to answer for what he did to Sarah Lynn on this earth, or whether he has to answer just to the Lord, he will answer for it. But one thing that I think about quite often, and that is that I do not have to wake up every morning knowing that I kill Sarah or that I let Sarah die in front of my eyes. But he does. A bit of good news uh, that Barbara passed along to Court TV and our audience that has been keeping track of this trial. Sarah Lynn had a daughter who is now 17, lives with Barbara, uh, and she's doing great. 4.0 student looking at colleges. That's that's great news because, you know, they, it can completely devastate someone, especially at that age. Um, now, we also spoke, Court TV spoke with the defendant's brother. Yeah, and apparently and the, the, the defendant's brother was in court, basically the whole trial, supporting Michael Colucci. Um, their father recently died, uh, who started a jewelry business, and the brothers both worked there. And, and there has been some sort of schism, it appears, because uh, he just said, uh, didn't say much about it, but well, I think you could infer it. He said he hadn't talked to his brother in about six months. So um, maybe some family support has waned a bit since this trial two years ago. Um, it'll be fascinating to see who's behind Mr. Colucci during trial the next time around. All right. Ted Rollins, thanks so much. Appreciate it. You bet. And don't forget, folks, you can check out that first trial. It is in the, our Trials on Demand section at courttv.com.